Hello and welcome to AlphaBold's uh, webinar on reshaping manufacturing with industrial IoT. We will be exploring some use cases and trends and uh, certainly be here available to answer any questions you guys may have. Thank everyone for joining us. Uh, I'm going to, uh, my name is Brian and I'm going to get us started and I'll introduce our speaker in just a moment. We're going to talk about uh, the big topics that we're going to cover today. Our agenda is uh, we're going to define what is IoT, just to make sure we're all on the same page, and how that uh, differentiates between industrial and consumer IoT. There are different purposes behind those and different applications of them. Uh, we'll talk a little bit uh, specifically around the use cases within industrial IoT. That is the focus of our uh, webinar today and some of the opportunities and benefits that uh, that presents and offers. Uh, we'll discuss a little bit about how uh, to take into consideration uh, cloud versus native uh, deployments of your IoT and how those uh, scale and provide security and uh, various aspects for how you would uh, implement that. Uh, Sam will actually do some demonstration of things in, real things in action. Moving on, let's talk a little bit about logistics here. So IIoT solutions can help in enabling much better visibility into the supply chain by way of deploying connected systems. Uh, these solutions can be used for vehicle tracking where the goods are in transit. And goods tracking on the individual level can also help identify the health of each item. And it's a game changer for uh, solutions like cold chain where you have temperature sensitive uh, material in transit. Okay, let's talk about IIoT in healthcare. It is also referred uh, to as IOHT, which is Internet of Health Things. Uh, it's rapidly transforming the healthcare landscape as it enables remote health monitoring. Um, accurate health updates can also be tracked uh, uh, with telemetries like blood pressure, heart rates, and the blood glucose values. Notifications and reminders about health problems is, is also a key uh, use case here, especially in the senior or elderly care use, uh, you know, um, uh, use cases. Anomaly detection is all, is enabled and also remote consultations. Okay, so here in the industry sector, uh, in the energy sector, IIoT um, is helping with the management of the demand with improved regulatory compliance with the deployment of smart meters and grids. Worker safety is also a key component here. Moving on, here are a few considerations uh, while choosing between the on-prem solutions uh, versus the cloud-based implementations. I'll provide examples as we go over those points. So I'll start off by availability and scalability. So in the on-prem realm, um, an example of that would be uh, a project that we delivered for one of our clients. And their requirement was to develop a custom MES, which is manufacturing execution system, that was to be deployed worldwide, more specifically North America, South America, Asia, and the EU. And as you may know that shop floors are not the usual office type environments. And it is not always possible to ensure reliable internet connectivity, which means the moment you know they lose internet connectivity, they stop manufacturing, which is a strict no-no. So therefore, their fundamental requirement was to develop an on-prem solution, which was to be deployed on the factory's local network uh, to mitigate the risk of unreliable uh, connectivity. But on the other hand, uh, an example of cloud solution would be in B2C scenarios. Let's say you have wearables. Um, and then there the requirement is to pair the uh, wearable with a mobile application um, and, and maybe render some real-time plots on the mobile application, but most of the data analysis actually is performed in the cloud backend. So there the availability and elasticity provided by the cloud services become uh, critical and deal-breaking factors. Uh, moving on to the next point here, cost optimization and financial viability. So it's to ensure that the developed solution, which may be fulfilling all the functional requirements, also remains financially viable from the cost benefit standpoint. An example, let's say you have data that is being generated. Um, uh, an example of that would be vibration analysis. And if that data is enormous in volume per unit time, then offloading the processing to cloud-based services may help fulfilling the functional requirements, but the implementation cost would be too high uh, because it, that would make the, the solution cost prohibitive. Then in such situations, it's recommended that you know you need to perform the heavy lifting locally, either on the S device or to a locally deployed system. 
and sync only the critical pieces of information in the cloud that may help with an analytics and, and reporting. Uh, moving on to uh, data security, it's, um, in, um, another aspect is, uh, um, you know, is data security. In one of the workshops that I was conducting with the client, a concern was raised about their data security. For example, for regulatory compliance reasons, they couldn't keep the data in the third-party storage service, which means, which includes all the, the cloud storage services. This element then becomes an important consideration for choosing between cloud versus on-prem solutions. Uh, reporting and analytics. The data generated by sensors eventually gets consumed by reporting services so that more sense could be made of it for business or operational reasons. Uh, the sheer horsepower coupled with the elasticity features, in addition to the business intelligence capabilities you get with the cloud, helps in fulfilling the business objectives by transforming the raw time series data into actionable insights. But like everything else, it also depends on the circumstances and the actual requirements. For example, the licensing cost per user and how intricate or complex reporting requirements are with data security imperatives. And keeping all those in view, they become important factors in choosing which way to go. Integration. Now, talking about actionable information, what if there is an alarm that goes off related to the malfunctioning of a critical piece of machinery? Then in such cases, it's possible to capture such events and have them integrated into the field service modules of the MES or ERP systems as support tickets that get uh, assigned to the support personnel in real time. Uh, this use case can further be refined uh, into predictive maintenance uh, in which the listening AI can generate alarms before the occurrence of the malfunction. Supportability. Now, the technology of choice for imp the implementing organization is also an essential factor while working on the overall architecture of the solution. Whether it's .NET, as is the case mostly in SMEs and even bigger enterprises or Java or the other open source options that we have available like Mean or Monstack or Python batch frameworks, etc. It is vital to have a clear idea on how to support different aspects of the IoT solution post deployment. Uh, we have to we have come across situations where the requirement was to enhance the existing solutions in production for decades, developed in C++ for PLC handling and make them part of the IIoT um, automation initiatives also. So then in, in a nutshell, it's important uh, to have those solutions developed uh, uh, and, and which are like native to the organization support structure as well. All right, time for a demo, but before I get to that, please uh, allow me to give a bit of a background here. So this demo that I'm going to be presenting um, in a moment, uh, is essentially a microcosm of the custom MES system that AlphaBolt developed for one of our existing customers. Uh, the core pillars of this system are process automation, error proofing, operational efficiency and velocity improvement, and business reports for planning purposes. Now, let's talk about process automation here. We achieved that by automating uh, daily tasks um, and workflows. Uh, we also integrated with business systems like warehouse management system, WMS to manage the flow of orders. Uh, we also integrated with modern and legacy manufacturing equipment by way of developing machine interfaces, uh, running inside controllers, and also uh, made sure that the serial communication and PLC integration was performing properly. We also developed customized UIs to help drive the process flow for the operators. Uh, moving on to error proofing. Uh, this, by the way, is one of the core or main objectives this solution helps achieve. Um, the whole idea is to minimize the write-offs here. In other words, it's an effort to minimize the loss incurred. A few examples. Uh, we integrated with the with weighing scales and the purpose was to facilitate the operator in the weighing process uh, without having uh, that person to perform those calculations manually. So, so the machines were uh, integrated with the solution in real time and all those telemetries were getting streamed off to the UIs. And uh, all those calculations that were required to be performed were, were, were being performed on the fly. Uh, another example could be uh, gluing and curing. Uh, there we integrated temperature sensors with MES to ensure the optimum curation time. Um, an example is uh, applying grips using semi-liquid glue, which is expensive, and the process helps in, in waste prevention by uh, ensuring the products are curated at an, uh, at an optimum temperature range 
within the stipulated time frame. Um, uh, another example is bending, uh, which relates to the bending of the instruments within the given tolerance. This machine, by the way, is running in production for more than two decades. So following through on the promise of automation and reducing the manual intervention, the solution preloads the bend parameters every time there is an item that uh, that is scanned, which needs to be bent. Um, length measurement. Uh, we are currently working on, on this project and using the computer vision technology at its core. Again, helping with the error proofing um, rather than letting the operators use manual procedures like using the measuring tape, the solution helps in locking the required length markers there. So moving on to um, the operational efficiency, I've already alluded to that while explaining the error proofing aspect, but I'd give one example here to drive this point home. So imagine the operator having to calculate the, the weight manually using a calculator, and the same process is repeating on the quality control station. Now this hampers the velocity of production. Uh, due to the automation of this process, the potential of increasing the throughput actually multiplies. Uh, business reporting. Um, so far, um, I've touched upon the operational aspects here, but it's imperative for the business to gain insights into the day-to-day -day activities. Uh, reports help the management make informed decisions. Some examples are KPIs, uh, such as the number of items produced per unit time, best performing stations, um, stations reporting the highest number of write-offs, uh, which operator is taking a break and for how long, um, how are different shop floors or factories performing in comparison. Uh, so those are some of the reports that we developed, which are part of this whole solution. All right, so enough talking, let's go to the demo here. Now, for better understanding, this is a simplified demo of the temperature probe use case. Um, in this demo, we are capturing live fields using the probe mounted on the controller. Um, these telemetries are then streamed to the remote applications. Um, the one that we uh, developed for this webinar is deployed on Azure using Azure IoT, and the other example is that of a custom developed application. But the flow here is, is, is explained um, in which you have uh, sensors uh, producing those telemetries. They go through uh, the, uh, the machine interface that we developed. Uh, inside those controllers on which those sensors are mounted. And this machine interface then streams the telemetries off to the uh, to the end application. And then those telemetries in real time help uh, drive the, the user experience on the application, uh, which could be alarms, notification, interactive graphs, or graphs and reports. Okay, so this is an application uh, that is deployed in Azure. Um, here is a probe uh, that is put in a, a cup containing mild warm water. Um, the telemetries uh, generated by the probe uh, will be sent, will be streamed off to the, the cloud application here. Uh, this is actually deployed in Azure IoT, and you can see those telemetries have made their way to the application. Um, here we have also configured a rule that, that you'll see in a moment. Um, and that as per the rule, if the temperature value were to exceed a certain threshold value, then um, an email notification is sent out. Uh, we can further uh, customize the solution by way of integrating this event uh, with other business applications. Let's say Microsoft Dynamics Field Service Module. And there is a support case that would be opened uh, prompting action by the field service staff. Okay, this is an example of the, the email notification that is being generated by uh, the cloud application. Okay, this is uh, a demo application uh, that is custom developed in, in .NET Core. This can actually be deployed on-prem. Again, a simplified use case here. Uh, focus on the uh, telemetry streaming here and every time it encounters a value that violates the, the threshold value, there is an indication. Currently you're seeing the optimal range and when it you know, uh, exceeds that value, it, it, it turns red. So in the actual production version, um, this is actually part of a report that shows a list of all the live work orders uh, being temperature curated with the remaining curing time based on the live temperature fields. 
and every time you know that that you know, the, the curation time for a specific work order is, is completed you know that specific work order then drops off the report and that report is deployed uh, on the shop floor and it's being shown on on big screens there okay moving on um this is an example of a very interesting project that we are currently working on um it's related to measuring the length of the given instrument using computer vision um uh, the general process flow at a higher level, if you can see that on the left side, uh, you have the camera fields uh, which are made to go through the computer vision pipeline performing steps such as edge detection, erosion dilation, and contour detection. And the outcome of the pre-processing is the length of the given instrument. In this example, the length of the instrument when uh, uh, measured uh, in a manual way using the Werner caliper it's is around 5.5 inches. And the length determined by the, the test application, again, is also 5.5. It's actually 4, uh, 5.47, but if you were to round it off, it, it uh, becomes like 5.5 inches. So in, in computer vision projects, the environment also plays a very uh, important role. As the attributes like lighting, camera angle, distance from the object, uh, those attributes can actually be fine-tuned to achieve more realistic and acceptable results as well. With that said, I'll move on to the next slide. And uh, that is related to how AlphaBone can help. Now, uh, we offer a number of services, uh, starting with strategy, architecture, and design. Uh, we also offer project management and business consulting services. This includes engaging with cross-function teams, device vendors, developers, and uh, other business stakeholders. Uh, we also provide device prototyping services on a number of hardware platforms. Um, Moving on to the solutions, um, so app development both on web and mobile. Um, I, I showed you examples of, of some of the web applications there, but we also uh, work on, on uh, wearable solutions in which mobile is a, uh, is a central element there. Um, image processing, data engineering, uh, and analytics, uh, as well as artificial intelligence. So aside to uh, IIoT, we also uh, work on uh, robotic process automation, uh, natural language processing, and machine learning solutions. So in a nutshell, we cover the entire spectrum. Uh, that includes device to the application all the way to the backend. Uh, so it is very important to pair with a knowledgeable consulting partner that understands the domain well. And if you want to embark on the journey, don't know that uh, you have a willing partner who wants to go on that journey with you. So that's it. So, right. So uh, we want to, of course, want to thank everybody who participated, uh, you know, that has joined us for this and uh, spent some time with us at Alpha Bold. Uh, we'd love to connect with you and, you know, see if uh, IoT is appropriate within your organization to help you make that determination and also to help you evaluate to what type of investment, uh, you know, strategically you would be required and, and how to, uh, part, you know, who to partner with, and hopefully that's us. Uh, but uh, what you know, the right way to approach it, and the right way that you can benefit from it, and uh, all the considerations around, related to a successful implementation. Uh, we want to encourage any of you to uh, reach out to us and let us know if you are interested in a follow-up conversation, uh, and we'd be glad to talk. Um, uh, great. Hey, actually, we got a question that just came in. Uh, so mm -hmm. this is from uh, Wendy. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, so the question is, can you share a bit of the challenges you roll uh, as you roll out uh, the application to the floor with limited connectivity as well as glo uh, globally from U.S. to other countries? Great question. Oh, yeah. We could probably have a whole Absolutely. webinar on that. <laughs> to uh, that. Uh, thank, thanks for that question. So yeah. Uh, we are our, we actually face a number of challenges starting with languages first i mean the way the application was designed uh, as i mentioned i mean it was supposed to be deployed uh, in, in asia as well as in in south america so i mean uh, it was just not something that that was uh, uh, being rendered in english so we had to make sure that you know uh, it it was deployed in a way in which it can assume local settings and the local languages then take effect uh, and the operators there who are who are uh, you know, natively speaking, those languages can understand the functionality functionality better. 
Okay, so from that was one of the considerations there. Um, aside to that, as far as the deployment is concerned, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a great question though. So uh, it's not completely something that 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 is um, disconnected from the cloud. So the deployments we do through Azure uh, uh, DevOps and we have uh, developed all the pipelines. So we check in the code, it goes through all the QA and, and things of that sort, and eventually it makes its way to the shop floors. And once that is done in a controlled environment, then the solution is actually running autonomously. Um, so that's a, that's another thing that, that we have implemented. And as far as the machine interfaces are concerned, most of them, I mean, uh, uh, are, are not like developed in .NET in which the, the main application was developed. So machine interfaces, uh, are, are developed in, in other uh, platforms like, you know, Python back frameworks and what have you. So in those situations, uh, we have developed solutions in which whenever you're reading a controller, it connects up to um, the uh, remote uh, repository. And there we have also developed applications in which it lets the IT staff there, uh, you know, go through the steps and in making sure that it's actually pulling in the, the, the correct uh, machine interface with with the proper configurations things like you know which station it needs to be connected with and so that the the, the telemetry could could actually be streamed uh, through uh, that station and not any other station and things of that sort so yeah i mean it, it is just not like one uh, pipeline that is at play but you know we have a number of automation solutions that that we have developed which are actually providing the required service as as far as the deployment of the whole uh, solution is concerned Thanks, Sam. Yeah, Wendy, I've actually had uh, some similar experience with the shop floor and a uh, food processing plant where uh, networking didn't uh, reach the, you know, the full extent of the, the size of the plant, right? We did some extensions and so there just wasn't any coverage either from wireless or uh, from uh, what we'd have to do in our case, dig up the floor in order to actually wire the environment. So uh, we actually came up we had a, a bot, uh, like, a, like a cleaning bot, which we put a uh, Bluetooth beacon on that would go out and connect uh, to the various devices. And it would go out on a regular interval to collect information. And then it would uh, be able to transmit back up once it got within range. And so we'd be able to collect all the data that way. The gallery. If not, we're going, we'll close it out there. We want to thank everybody for your participation. All right, we hope that everyone has a wonderful day. Uh, we will likely reach out to you and see if there's anything we can learn that you learned from this and anything we can do better as well as any way we can help you. And uh, you know, we, we appreciate you looking to AlphaBold as a, as a resource and we hope that we have a chance to engage. Thanks so much and have a wonderful day. Thank you everyone.